Welcome to our lecture online. We're now going to use Abel's theorem and a few little mathematic tricks to show that the general solution to this homogeneous second order differential equation with constant coefficients can be found to be the general solution for the case where the characteristic equation shows that it only has one single root, root equals minus b over 2a, under the condition that b squared minus 4ac, the portion underneath the radical, is equal to zero. And I think by now we already know what that general solution looks like, but we're going to show you how to derive it using Abel's theorem. So the first thing we need to do is take this equation and write it into the general form, where we have no coefficient in front of the y double prime term. So divide everything by a, we get the following. Our equation is going to be written as y double prime plus b over a times y prime plus c over a times y is equal to zero. Uh, let me write that a little bit better here. There we go. Now, this here is the function in front of y prime. Now, even though it's a constant, we can still think of it as the p of t that we normally see in the general solution, which means that the round skin can be written as some constant times e to the minus integral of p of t dt, where p of t is the coefficient of the y prime term. So this becomes minus b over a times dt. When we integrate it, this becomes c e to the minus b over a times t. So this is now the Ronskian of this particular problem. We also know that the Ronskian can be defined as, or I should say the Ronskian of the two solutions, uh, y1 and y2, can be written as the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime and y2 prime. But notice they've already given us one of the solutions. And of course, that's a necessary part in this particular case. Otherwise, it would be kind of difficult to find both solutions using this method. We'll show you some techniques later on. But first of all, they tell us that one of the solutions is e to the rt, r being, of course, minus b over 2a. So we can plug that in here. And we can say, well, this is equal to, for y1, we write e to the rt. Then we have the unknown function y2. The derivative of this would be r times e to the rt, and this would be y2 prime. And if we then multiply this out, this would be equal to, we can then say on the one side, the Ronskin can be written as the product of these two, which is e to the rt times y2 prime minus the product of those two, which is r times e to the rt times y2, and that equals the Ronskin that we found over here, which is some constant, times e to the minus b over a times t. Now, if you plug in what r is equal to in terms of minus b over 2a, then the equation looks as follows. So we have e to the minus b over 2a times t times y2 prime minus r, and of course r would be equal to minus b over 2a, that becomes plus b over 2a times e to the minus b over 2a times t times y2 equals c e to the minus b over a times t. Now notice this becomes a first order linear differential equation of y2. So we have y2 prime times a function in front of that, plus this function times y2 equals another function of t. So now we have what we call a first order linear differential equation. And I'm going to put into the, into the general form by dividing everything by this coefficient right here. I'm going to divide these two terms by this, and let's see what we end up with. So on the, on the left side, when we divide through, we get y2 prime. Now we're going to divide this by this. Now notice we have e to the minus b over 2a times t divided by e to the minus b over 2a times t. So that cancels out and we're simply left with b over 2a times y2. So we end up with plus b over 2a times y2 equals. And then if we divide this by this, 
we have a minus b over a and a minus b over 2a times t. So this is half as big as this. So when we divide, it's like subtracting. That means we're going to end up with, on the right side, c e to the minus b over 2a times t. And now we can solve this differential equation, first order, to find y t, which then, or y sub 2, which will be the other solution to the original differential equation. So let's go ahead and do that. We need an integrating factor. The integrating factor is equal to mu of t, which is equal to e to the integral of b over 2a times t. So it's going to be e to the integral of this function right here. And that becomes equal to e to the b over 2a times t. So there's my integrating factor. And now what I'm going to do is find y of 2. So y of 2 is equal to 1 over the integrating factor times the integral of the integrating factor of t times this function right here, which we call typically q of t dt plus a constant of integration. Okay, plug in the numbers, see what we get. So y2 is equal to 1 over the integrating factor, which is this. This becomes e to the minus b over 2a times t by bringing it to the numerator and then changing the sign of the exponent times the integral of this, which is e to the b over 2a times t times q of t, which is this. That would be times a constant times e to the minus b over 2a times t dt plus a constant. Now notice when you multiply these two, since the signs are different, this will be e to the 0, which is 1. So this becomes y2 is equal to e to the minus b over 2a times t times the integral of c dt plus another constant of integration. Now when we multiply this together, we get the following. We get y of 2 is equal to, multiplying this times the integral of that, which is c times t. So we get c t e to the minus b over 2a times t. And multiplying this times this, we get plus, and let's call it c3 and c4, just two constants, times e to the minus b over 2a times t. Finally, I'm now ready to find the solution to our original differential equation. We can say that y is equal to y1 plus y2. And y1 was this right here, which is e to the rt. And r is, of course, minus b over 2a, minus b over 2a times t. So that's y1. And we add to that these constants, or these terms, they're not constants, plus c3 t to the e, t times e to the minus b over 2a times t, plus c4 e to the minus b over 2a times t. Now notice that the first term and the third term are very similar. I could, I could put any constant in here, call it c5, and so if I add c5 and c4 together, then I get another constant, call it c. So finally I can say that y is equal to the sum of these two, just use any old constant, call it c1, e to the minus b over 2a times t. And then I have another constant right here, call that c2, plus c2 times t times e to the minus b over 2a times t. And this then becomes the general solution to this original differential equation. And notice we used it by using Abel's, or we found it by using Abel's theorem and by using the concept of the Ronskin. Now, of course, minus b over 2a is simply the root, so I could also write this as c1 e to the root times t plus c2 times t times e to the root times t. So that would be another way in which you can write the very same solution to the differential equation. But notice how useful the Ronskin can be. If you already know one of your solutions, the Ronskin can be used and Abel's theorem can be used to find the other part of the solution to that original differential equation.
And that's how it's done.